Hey folks, thanks for joining us. It's the 5th of July. I hope you're all doing well. Um, I'm here in the studio. I am rushing from here to there to out there. A few little pieces getting together so I can put in my small kiln. So, join me for that. Um, just quickly, these are mainly sort of small, small pieces. Um, so yeah, I've got some more of these guys, which were those uh, tea bowls, which I just want to just talk about these things briefly. So this has a, 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 a milky glaze on the inside and then temiku on the outside. My temiku seems to be, I've just got a little bit left in a bucket here. And I think I substituted the, the natural red iron oxide for uh, synthetic red iron oxide, which I found to be better in my decorating in terms of the colors popping, if you know what I mean, the irons, etc. So, yeah, I sort of reinstated that. I'm going to mix up a, a bigger batch of it because that's getting not much in the bucket there, that small bucket. But I, it was enough to, to enable me to raw glaze these guys. So that's those. Looking forward to the results of those. Incidentally, um, like to encourage the, uh, the breaking of the in the glaze from black to brown it's not a bad idea just to lightly where you've got this sort of pattern here which will naturally tend to it'll want to break on the pattern but to encourage that you can just lightly rub over the the glaze okay like that you can do that with any glaze and especially if you have any little pinholes uh, then you, you, you probably a good idea just to lightly rub over and blow off like that. Okay. Okay, moving on from those here on the bench. Here I've just got this little guy. Well, this guy was awkward to dip because of, of the, the height. Now here you can see, uh, this is a little faceted bud vase. Um, with a milky glaze on, on the inside. There's a little bit of, of, of pinholing here of glaze, so I'm just going to do exactly what I just said. Lightly rub that. Also, you notice the, the angles of the faceting. So again, you can just, just lightly rub over those like that lightly I emphasize the word lightly because you don't want to rub it bare down to the clay underneath of course just lightly like this just over those high points and any pinholing that you see I wouldn't worry too much about pin pinholing most of the time it it just disappears on its own but okay so this has got a little bare bit at the bottom here which is actually it's going to be fine uh, I quite like it sometimes when pots are here where my finger, where I, where I held it, when I dipped it, that's an area of attention. Give that a little rub over and make sure that that is, is nice. Okay, that's that guy done. Uh, next, what do we got? Oh yes, this is, so this is um, a tea bowl, which I had the milky on the inside and temiku on the outside. Now with this one, what I want to do, and you can join me for this, I'm just going to dip this in some, um, this is experimental, I've never actually done this before. Um, so there I've got my, my regular milky glaze, which also doubles up for my celadon, because the celadon just has 2% uh, red iron oxide in it. That's the, that's the other bucket there. So both these glazes are the same base glaze, just this one's got 2% red iron oxide, which gives the celadon. Okay, so what I want to do is, I just want to dip this, and then I've prepared here some rust powder from my, 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 
my chimney that rusts above the above the kiln. So I've I've screened off some of that 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 rust. So the, the, the pieces are not too big. So what I propose to do is I'm going to dip this one uh, probably down about a third. Then I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of, of rust over that. It's a little bit experimental. So, but I think I've just got to bear in mind here something that is it's already got a glaze on the inside but then it's got this glaze over the top. Now I'm going to dip it again. It's going to make it very thick perhaps up here on the on the top. As I as I dip it, it's going to it's going to take on then a third layer right here. So I've just got to be I'm just thinking what I'm going to do with that. In fact, what I might do is just going to dip the lip, just dip it like that once, okay? Right, I'm going to have to put that down now because I'm going to have to wait for that just to... I won't be able... oh yeah, I could actually. No, I can actually do it. I was thinking I was going to have to hold it, but of course I can hold it by the... by the... Um, Here's another little thing just to mention. This tea bowl, you'll notice, if you notice the foot here, it's got some little some little lines in it here that I put, which I actually like from a visual point of view, but it also it feels really nice to hold in the hand when you're going to dip it. Okay, let's do this trick with the get that ready there. Got this ready. I'll try and dip it sort of reasonably um, straight, if you know what I mean. So that's what I've done. You see, now I'm going to take some of this iron rust. That'll do. That'll do. So I think that worked at the top there. It hasn't taken on too too thick right up here. So I'm hoping that this rust will run down a bit, create an effect. And We'll see. That, so that's that one. See, I'm bringing you up to speed with all my, <laughs> my tricks. Well, that's a rather nice thing about having a small kiln. You can be a little bit more experimental because you've got a quicker turnover of pots. Let's just go over here a second. I've got something else going on over here, and that is... Um, yeah, so this is a pot that I actually did on a workshop and it's got a decoration of shellac so where the shellac is it will come out without any glaze all right now I've lightly wiped it off with a sponge as you can see to sort of to highlight the shellac it doesn't really absorb on the shellac because the shellac is uh, is like impervious you know to glaze really it's like wax, you know, it, it behaves in the same way. So, we've got that guy. Um, put him down there. As you'll notice, I've got them on my warming tray here, which is like, can't really put my hand on that. It's too, too hot. Uh, a little Temuku. This one's actually got... Um, actually, I need to... Let's bring the tripod over here a sec, folks. Bear with me. Bear with me. Because I've got to do oops. I've got to do something. I can't do it one-handed. So uh, there it is. Right. 
So this guy, this guy actually has got a, uh, a um, you can't barely see it, but it does have a an engraved decoration underneath the temaku, which I'm hoping I'm hoping may come out. If I rub it a bit like this, it will encourage it the the iron to break on the in, engraved flex that I've put there. I'm not sure that it will. Um, I've been a bit out of touch working with te Temiku, I'll be honest, uh, for a couple of years since my Temiku went bad on me and I never seemed to be able to reproduce the results that I used to once get. When you rub it, just blow it off, okay? All right, that's that. Um, last but not least, I've got here a tea bowl that has got uh, it's in a, a paddled form, and I've dipped it in my um, crocodile blue Nile. That's the that's my crocodile glaze, which is red clay and wood ash. But the, the crocodile blue Nile it has a small amount of uh, cobalt in it, so that's one we've been working with recently. Uh, it's it's drying rather slowly as you can see uh, partly because the bucket was just about empty and I had a difficulty to actually get it dipped and uh, it took on rather a lot of water something to be careful with raw wear when that happens hence having these little trays if you're going to get into the world of raw glazing and once firing I highly recommend you have these here's another tea bowl uh, now that one there, you see it's got a mark on it. That's because I, when I put it down, I put it down next to another one and it touched, which is a bit stupid, I know. But anyway, so I've touched it up. Now I'm going to just rub over that scar where you've, where it did that. Just bear in mind, if you do anything like what I'm doing here, um, I'm making the surface powdery, which might render it not very friendly for decorating on top of. This particular one I do actually want to put some uh, some ilmenite on. So, with that in mind, and I've got in the other room, let's just take everything through. I'll grab that guy, I'm going to go through now into into this other space here where I have the fan blowing because it is like humidity unbelievable horrible sticky mess you know what I'm you know what I'm talking about oh, these north these northeastern summers that we have up here like too sticky for words all right I've just done some some banding there now I've got some other ilmenite. I used the ilmenite of Mike, Mike's ilmenite that he gave me the other time. Oh, let me just get that thing. I'll show you quickly. This is the this is the tea bowl I did using um, Mike's ilmenite that he 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 ball milled and prepared himself. So just to, just to show you that, I don't know if I can get it to come out in here. You, you know, that would actually work quite well. Uh, on this tea bowl though, I'm gonna prepare some other ilmenite, which is what I already had. I didn't have much of it in mine. But you don't need a lot of ilmenite, it, it goes a long way, you know. Um, ilmenite is, I, I think it's iron titanium oxide. Somebody will correct me, no doubt, if I'm wrong. But anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that. So in order to do that, I'm going to need 
I'm gonna need... I'm gonna need a mirror, hang on. It's just a piece of glass to mix it on. You can use a, a tile or something, but I don't have a tile handy, so it's going to be a, a mirror. La, 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 la. So I'm just going to put, don't need very much, a smidgen of that. And I'm going to need a brush. Brush, here's a brush. Looks clean, okay. Are we in the picture? All right, let me just put that there. Put that one there. Right, now we need a little, a little water, that's all we do. So here it is on the mirror. And just add a few drops of water like that, you see. Once you've done that, you're then going to you're going to mix up here a brew. You see, you get the strength right. This is actually quite finely ball milled. In fact, this is I think this is actually a bit finer than. Um, what Mike okay all right let's get let's get down here all right I've got to do a decoration now oh I'm a little bit squeezed for space here aren't I with all this what's going on here all right So mix that up well. Really the strength of oxides and things like this that we use, you've just got to do it, so to speak, and you'll learn, learn what is, what is the right amount, if you know what I mean. Okay, I think I'm just going to band here. Yeah, got a little bit of powder on the surface there. I should have. Finding the surface of the the Temaku glaze is a little that is something you have to watch for always when you do decorations that so I've got a broader line and now I'm gonna do like a try and do a finer one. Yeah, okay, like that, and I'm gonna do La, 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 la. I'm gonna give it a little blow there. Now then, let's see. I'll do another one here. Quite nice sometimes to have a thicker line and then a thinner line right beside it. That often works quite well. Come on, pigment flow off the end of my brush. All right. All right, so with this guy, That is what we got so far. Now I may just do some simple 
This is not going to be very user friendly for decorating on, I don't think, because of that problem with the um, maybe for ease of trying instead of trying to get the, the, the pigment to flow nicely off the end of the brush, I'm going to do a series of a series of simple um, I was going to say dots. Yeah, dots, because I'm not quite sure how this is going to behave. And I've got a feeling it might run a bit. You know, you go to trouble to make a nice sort of uh, brushwork decoration, only to find that it runs on you and looks terrible. As a result. So what I'm doing is that, you see. Not taking any risks, I'm just um, I got a feeling this this might be a little different this all night than the the other. It can come out very nicely actually, I think, the, the Temiku with a combination of Temiku and Ilmenite is... My father used to do it quite a lot on some... on pots that he would make. Let's, let me do one up to the camera and show you. If I don't make a pig's ear out of it, hopefully not. So try and get them big and then getting and then getting smaller, you see. try and fire this kiln today. So it's about noon now, maybe even past noon, but I, I want to try to get a... We've got a workshop here tomorrow. Okay, there he is. De -de 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 -de. Well, we'll see how he comes out. Thanks for joining us, folks. I think we're going to wrap it up there. You see me do fox gloves. I've got to decorate those now. Um, but anyway, I think we've run run our course with this clip. Um, if you're after a leech treadle wheel, get in touch with me. Um, what else? I've actually sold five of them. But I can speak to my carpenter, and we can, and he can make up six or seven, you know. So, uh, apart from that, what else to say? Uh, yes, thank you for all those people who've uh, added positive comments or just comments to my videos of late in relation to kiln results. Thank you for those people who have have said I want that pot or the other pot or. I like this one here, this timestamp, I want that one. Thank you for all those people. Your pots are, uh, I, I'll, as soon as I get your money, <laughs> the pots will be, up, they'll be sent off to you. They're, they'll be on their way. So, um, and workshops here in my studio, here in Milheim, central Pennsylvania. Come. Come for a come for a workshop. There's plenty of dates up there. Um, it's basically a keep practicing workshop. It's about throwing prim primarily, but you know we we touch on a, a number of different things, and I demonstrate and show different different stuff. You know, different throwing techniques. Sometimes we do a bit of glazing just to mix it up a bit. Yeah, because people a lot of people. 
There's a lot of aspects, aren't there, to making pottery. It's not just sitting on the wheel and with a wet lump of clay. That's a small part of the time that you actually spend. And there are a lot of other skills that people need, you know, in relation to glazing and handling and all of these things and trimming. Now, I don't usually do very much trimming on workshops uh, because I feel that it's more important for people on a keep practicing workshop to learn how to throw. They spent their lives trimming probably already because they've been told, well, it doesn't matter, just throw it as you like, it doesn't matter, you can trim it afterwards. That's a, that's a bad mentality. And um, so I think it's more important for me to show people, to show folk how to throw, how to lift the clay, how to work to a gauge. You've got plenty of time to learn about trimming and all that. But you don't want to be trimming. There's a lot of pots that people trim that they really shouldn't be trimming, but they are. And um, so it's my, my mission and aim, if you like, is to try to show people a better way. Don't let the good become the enemy of the best. In other words, don't let trimming, which you love, because I know you're all trimmerholics at it. I like trimming too, don't get me wrong. But you know, there's a place for trimming and there's a place not to trim. A tea bowl like this, which, which has a cut foot, yes, we want to trim that because that's part, of the, that's part of the process, you know, of that particular tea bowl. But a mug like this, that doesn't need trimming. No, you just got to you got to throw it well and quick, and thumb it off. That's all you do. You cut your cut your making time in half. Especially if you do raw glazing and once firing as well, thrown into the bargain. Hey, good folks! Thanks for joining us. Thanks for being with us as always. Uh, keep practicing. Stay tuned. See you around town. Bye for now. Dee -dee -dee -dee.